everyone and welcome back to a couple books this is couple as always now today we are going to be doing our December wrap-up which I'm super excited to share with you all and if you guys can hear we have Nova in the background with us today which is a lovely nice guest yeah I see you yes thank you anyways let's get started so this month we're gonna be wrapping up with 16 reads that I did it was not my best month yet due to writing papers and all those lovely academic things we only got through 16 but they were 16 great books so I'm super excited to share them with you all I read some young adult fantasy I read some adult fantasy I read horror and I read some gamelet slash RPG so I'm super excited to get in all of this stuff with you guys so let's get started but before I can give my first review this month I would like to remind you all that this is the last Last time you guys can sign up for the book giveaway that we are doing to commemorate passing 100 subscribers so make sure you go downstairs into the description box and check out the link in order to be able to comment down below on the video where I announce it so that you can get your chance of winning a free book so I would love to do this to commemorate your guys' support so let's all try and get our names in there it's super exciting, let's do it. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get into the first book review of this wrap up. And that is gonna be A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. This is a horror novel that I read. And in this horror novel, we are introduced to a family. This family consists of a mother, father, and two, their two daughters. The story is told from three perspectives. It is told from the first perspective being the younger daughter, Mary. Mary has all grown up now and she is doing an interview with someone who runs, wants to write a book about her childhood. The second point of view we have is a blog that is posting reviews on each episode of the TV show that is filmed in this book. And then we have our final and most important one, which is going to be the actual, like, in the past story told from Mary's perspective. This was a very interesting book. Mary is the younger sister of Marjorie. Marjorie is unfortunately suffering from what the parents initially believed to be schizophrenia. And so they go to the doctor to get her help and to help and get her on medication and like try and work their way through this illness with her. And then unfortunately, because the, the daughter's not getting better, and she's getting worse in fact, the father starts to find religion. And so he ends up bringing a priest into the picture and trying to have, see if he can help out at all and he ends up believing that the daughter is in fact possessed by a demonic spirit and in addition to all that the family's on hard times they don't have a lot of money in the bank so money's short food is short everything's kind of short like nothing's going well finally we have like kind of the main thing around this book which is what got me interested into it is that a TV show is made about them while they're still living in there to document their experiences of Marjorie who is the daughter who has either schizophrenia or is possessed by a demon and we don't really know which going into this book so I'll leave it for you guys to decide after you guys read this book but I absolutely love this book I thought it was fantastic it follows a lot of unique point of views which I really enjoyed Mary is because Mary's an eight-year-old I do believe in this book it is told from an eight-year-old's eye so she doesn't understand certain things she doesn't listen to conversations the way that like an adult would and that is told very well in terms of the tone of the story I know I don't know if this is a thing that Paul Tremblay always does because so far the two books I've read from, by him have been from adult perspectives which I think maybe just might be his thing but I think he does it very well in this book just like he did in the last book a cabin at the end of the world he really is able to draw on like a realistic idea of what a eight-year-old would understand about the situation it had a lot of climax moments in this book it was like pretty intense the daughter is like you don't know what's going on with her you don't know if she's faking it you don't know if she's actually schizophrenic and it's a misdiagnosis you don't know if she's actually possessed by a demon you don't really know what's going on and it was a very stressful book to read because of this but nonetheless, it was a great book. I ended up giving it four stars. My reason for reducing a star is because I felt that sometimes the different POVs kind of drew you away from the story. And while they were interesting and definitely fun, it felt kind of like uh, something worthy of like a footnote rather than a whole like take you out of the story moment. In addition to that, I also felt that there were a few characters in there that were there purely to make references to other famous horror authors or other famous things from pop culture and they didn't really contribute to the story so it was kind of distracting having to remember all these names especially when the film crew comes into play and then them not really having a big part in the story of course one could also argue that this is because it's from the point of view of an eight-year-old who's going to 
why would she remember all these people? So overall, I think it's a fantastic read. Highly recommend picking it up. The next book I'd like to talk to you is actually three books, and that is going to be The Tales from the Gas Station. This is the three other horror books I read this month. This, I already did an entire video on the series review in a previous video, which will be linked down below. As I mentioned before, so we're not going to go into it too deeply, Tales from the Gas Station is about this jack, this, whoa. Tales from the Gas Station is about this gas station clerk named Jack. <laughs> Jack is just your everyday guy. He's working at this gas station where we all know weird things happen at gas stations. And unfortunately, the gas station he works at is just kind of like extra special. A lot of weird stuff goes down at this gas station and not like, oh, some weird creepo like broke the window and yelled racist slurs and then ran away. No, like, like demons, crazy raccoons, you know, flying mutated hedgehogs, like anything you can think of that's weird, it, there's a chance that it will show up on this book. It was extremely odd. There's plants that grow fingers. It was a really weird book. I enjoyed every single second of it. I read I read the first book and listened to the audiobook for the second two. I would recommend picking up the audiobook for all three because I think the narrator does a fantastic job. His name is Mr. Creepypasta. He's kind of a podcast personality. Absolutely fantastic book series. I really enjoyed it. Um, I ended up giving the first book five stars. The second book I gave, I gave 3.5 stars and then the, flash, the third book I gave 4.5 stars. I'm now waiting for the fourth book, but it was a really great and super fun time and it's this horror comedy at its finest and I highly recommend you guys all check it out. The next one I have for you guys is actually also a continuation of a series I'm working through, which is these three books. I picked up uh, The Mass City by Jennifer Cogman, which is the second book in the Invisible Library series, and then I picked up The Burning Page by her, which is the third book, and then naturally the fourth book I picked up as well, The Lost Pi Plot. I keep saying pilot, it's plot. It's plot, couple. Listen to yourself, it is plot. Um, the Lost Plot. This is, I'm not done with the series yet. I'm really loving it. I've read obviously two, three, and four of the series, and I think I've got two more or three more on my shelf. So I'm really enjoying the series so much. If you, I talked about it also on this channel, so I don't want to go too far in depth into it um, because you guys can check out some of my other videos where I talk about it. I will try and link one down below for y'all to check out. But basically, this series is about Irene. Irene is a librarian. What a librarian is, is a worker at this mystical library that kind of operates in between worlds and in this fantasy realm there are multiple planets or multiple worlds I should say and each of these worlds are governed by different types of natural laws. There's laws of order and laws of chaos and these laws kind of deem how the world's going to function. How much magic's going to be on this world, are there creatures outside of normal humans i.e. vampires, werewolves, that kind of stuff. All these normal fantasy things that we've seen before are kind of determined based off of these two functions. And then for, therefore each world is unique and has a different history and a different, has a different story. And with that, the library is tasked with going and finding different renditions of books in these different worlds. So you sit there. So for example, Bram Stoker's Dracula might have not been written in one world, but may have been written like in our world completely or may have an extra chapter in a different world or may only be half complete in a different world. So due to these varieties of situations that develop into different types of fiction and different works being finished or unfinished or added on to, Irene is tasked with going out there and finding these different types of work and bringing them back to the library. On her side, she has Kai. Kai is her best buddy, her buddy cop, and Kai is her apprentice, but there's something weird and secretive about him. Of course, I know what it is, but you guys will find out by reading the series. So far, I've really enjoyed it. Her series kind of started going down a little bit. The Mass City, I ended up giving 3.5 stars. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was really good. And in this one, um, her apprentice is kidnapped and she has to go find him. And I thought it was a really good book. I thought it was a really good addition. However, I had some issues with it, henceforth the 3.5. Of course, for more, I'll probably may be making a series review once I've caught up with the series, so be on the lookout for that. For this one, A Burning Page, I gave three. In order to avoid spoilers, I'm not going to go too much into what's going on in this one, but basically I felt that the that there wasn't really anything new going on. Yes, if you know, if you've read the book, then you know why that's kind of a laughable statement, but I felt like there was no real character growth or development with anyone, and anyone we kind of met was kind of like a short-term addition. It wasn't that there was anything super wrong with the book, it's just that I didn't sense that Cogman was growing, and 
making more of the world. She wasn't adding on to the universe at all. But nonetheless, I still really enjoyed it. However, that all changed with a lost plot and I went from enjoying it to loving it. This I gave five stars. I absolutely love this book. I thought it was by far the best one since the first book and I really enjoyed it immensely and I highly recommend that people pick up this series because you see Cogman's growth as a writer and she's fantastic and this was a great addition to the series. So, and in this one, in order to avoid anything, basically in this one, Irene has to end up going to a, she has to go to like, it's uh, 1920s America, like prohibitions in full effect, everything like that's going on. It was really fun. I really love this time era. So it was a really fun read. It has gangs, it has everything in it, like dragons, fae, it's got everything going on in this book. I really enjoyed it immensely. I thought it was super fun. So that is those books. And then next we have The Trader's Blade by Sebastian de Castell. This book I've also talked about on this channel, I think. Yeah, I think I've talked about it. Maybe I haven't though. But Basically, this is about a group of guys who are known as the Great Coats. The Great Coats were formed to protect the king, and a few years ago, the king was murdered under the Great Coats watch. Since then, they've all been disbanded, and they have all since kind of left and done their own side gigs and done their own jobs since they're no longer being employed by the king since uh, he's dead. Due to that, they've also kind of gained a reputation as dishonorable, the residents of the realm, I'll call them Tattercloaks, and kind of demean them and think that they're not worthy people because they let the king die, even though everyone hated the king, which is a whole complicated thing. But anyways, in this we follow three men who used to all be former great coats as they go on their journey to try and find a way for great coats to kind of come back, maybe not in their full shining glory of the old days, but come back in some way, whether it be as guards or come back as like protectors of the streets or the roads or something. They're, they're on this journey to try and make that happen and along this journey we meet a lot of interesting people, we meet a lot of interesting characters. An extremely good book. It was kind of low on the magic but I was okay with that. It was super fun. Some great characters in here. Each were interesting. Very much enjoyed this one. And oh I forgot. Yeah I gave this five stars. I'm super excited to pick up the next one. Next is going to be my YA fantasy. So I read the Grishaverse in this one. I will be doing a full series review on this because I need to vent a little bit. So be excited for that. I gave these four, two, and three respectively. This was a very interesting series. For those who don't know, I'm sure everyone already knows about the Grishaverse, but the Grishaverse, we follow this girl named Alina. Alina is a orphan and she was born and raised alongside her best friend Mal. Mal and her are old enough now to be drafted into the army, which is mandatory since the country's always at war, so they get drafted into the army. And in this realm, there is this massive, they call it the Unsea, there's this massive like gash of darkness across the country that basically prevents people from one side of the country to going to the other side because in this gash there's like this like massive dark cloud that blots out all light and inside the dark cloud there's like these horrendous monsters that will like basically eat anyone that enters so it's really dangerous to cross to get to the other side but alina and her fellow soldiers have to cross over for various reasons and they end up getting stuck in the darkness at which point alina is revealed to be a grisha and she has the power to summon light in this universe the magic system is all around these people who basically are grisha and there's different types of grisha there's people who are able to summon or not summon but control water control air control fire there's people who are able to like basically control your heart for like another person's heart, they're able to like stop your beating heart. There are those who are able to mend people magically. And then of course there are people who are able to create things like fabric, I think they're called fabricators or something like that. And I really enjoyed the magic in this world. I really enjoyed the world itself. I really hated Alina. Oh my God, she drove me bloody insane. Like, oh my God, Lord help me. Lord help Alina needs help. This book was very much YA. It had a lot of love triangles, rectangles, quadru hexagons, everything shape you can think of. It was probably in this book at some point. And there's a very interesting magic system going on at play. And it was a very interesting read. But don't be worried because I will be doing a full rant review of these three books later on. So be sure to check that out. My last four books that I read in December are going to be the first one being Gamers is a lit RPG novel by Cambry Varner. And Gamers was a super fun read. I did a whole separate video on reviewing 
um, this book and another book this month, about two weeks ago, which will be down below as well, so be sure to check it out. It says I'm not going to go so into depth, but basically in this book, a stepsister and her stepsister, what's like the word for that? Two sisters that are both stepsisters? Stepsisters. Yeah, two stepsisters. That's the word. Wow. Oh my god. Two stepsisters get together and they want to play a virtual um, MMORPG, like a MMORPG on their computer. And so they get together and then all of a sudden they wake up and they're actually in the game world and they're actually the characters themselves. And now that they're in this game world, they have to like survive because they don't know what's going to happen if they die. So they have to start the game. They're both fresh. They have never really played this game before. One of the older sisters, Darcy, has played it before, so she's able to kind of give some help. But she's a like a level three character and just started. Our main character is a level one character who literally just started. So it's very intense. It's very scary. It's very interesting because you see a lot of game mechanics in there and you see a lot of like roles and those types of things taking place in terms of like how the characters act and stuff and the game mechanics behind it but other parts of the world seem too real like the innkeepers are actually racist in here people actually have real motivations like very odd things are going on and there's really no answers provided yet but i'm super excited to check out the second book to figure out what is going on the next book i read is going to be nine toes by Tim Andrews. This I also gave five stars and it was in the same video that I reviewed Gamers in. This one is about a hobgoblin. Yeah, hobgoblin I do believe if I remember correctly. His name is Nine Toes since, well, he lost the toe people. Sorry for that. Um, but anyways, he lost the toe and now he basically has come back to life after losing his toe as a adventure. What does that mean? That means that he basically is like a player character, except that he's not a player character. He's not one of us playing D&D. He has basically gained full autonomy in a D&D universe, and he is now like a warlock, and he has to basically go off and start adventuring in order to gain power and begin to understand what it means to be an adventurer. It's really interesting. It basically answers the question of what happens to those characters that you roll when you want to play like a tabletop RPG, but then you don't use those characters that you roll. And that question is answered with nine tests. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Be sure for a more in-depth review to check out both of these five-star reviews down below. My second to last book is The Dragon's Revenge by Connor Costick. This book I also gave five stars, and this is also a lit RPG book. This one I super duper enjoyed because it basically follows this group of ragtag adventurers who are really into online games and they play these virtual like fully immersive um, MMORPGs and they've gotten really good at it. Our main character is probably like one of the best at this current like main game out there. It's called Epic and he's actually so good that he is recruited by the creators of Epic to help them out with a slight problem in Epic 2. The slight problem is, is that when they installed an AI system into the game to basically give the bad guys more autonomy and, that, and basically make them stronger and harder to kill, they accidentally basically created a monster onto themselves and now the AI has slowly taken over the game and they can't get players into the game because the AI has basically taken over all of the spawn points and due to various situations, the game people have really no option but to actually play the game itself and try and beat back these hordes of bad guys that are in the game that are that have this artificial intelligence inside of them. And they recruit our main character to basically help them defeat the queen of the mobs. Yes, these are all words in English. Anyways, I do a more depth review as well down below, so be sure to check that out. Uh, my second and last read is NPCs by Drew Hayes. This is a book that basically introduces us to a group of characters. These characters are NPCs, not player characters. They are the people in the game or in the MMORPG or in the video game or whatever. They're the people in the game that are not actually playing the game. They're the people who you sell your goods to, the ones who buy things off of you, the people who you have to get quests from, the people you have to kill to complete quests. They are those people. But in this world, these NPCs are sitting at this tavern, and long story short, these four adventurers come in, which are i.e. us, and they end up dying because of their own stupid mistake. And the NPCs all realize at the same moment that this is not good. Why? Because they've been summoned by the king. And this king is known to be super vicious, meaning that if the adventurers themselves don't end up showing up at the castle, 
in time that the king's going to take his fury out on where the adventurers died. And that means basically the town in which these NPCs live in. And so the NPCs get together, they decide to fake it as adventurers, put on the armor of the characters themselves, and go out there and fulfill the king's summons in hopes to not have their village destroyed. It's very interesting. The first half of this book I really hated and I almost DNF'd it. The second half is really utterly fantastic. And that is why it's being given a three star rating because I really enjoyed half and I really hated the other half. And I think that's the best compromise here, people. If you're willing to stick through it, um, I think it's worthwhile because he has got three other books in the series. So it might be worth it because maybe this books afterwards will make the dry beginning very good. I enjoyed the idea of it. I think it's a very interesting thing having these non-player characters. And there's some like meta gaming stuff going on in there in terms of like the autonomy of NPCs. A lot of interesting things in this book, but it's very typical Dungeons and Dragons sword, spells, that kind of stuff going on in this book. Nothing too surprising in that regard, but in the sense of how he approaches it from an NPC's perspective is a very unique thing and I really enjoyed it. And it, the second half of the book made the entire book worth it. But just so you guys know, the first half is very, 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 very dry. The last book I read this month is the Creepypasta Collection. Urban Legends That You Can't Unread. This is by Mr. Creepypasta. Mr. Creepypasta is has his own podcast where he does um, basically reads off stories that are found on Reddit and other websites and he basically in this book gathered a whole bunch of his best and favorite creepypastas and put them together. What is a creepypasta you may be asking? I've answered this I think before on my channel but just to reiterate a creepypasta is basically a story that someone has found somewhere that is creepy and they copy and paste it onto Reddit. Um, it comes from the term copy pasta. Anyways with that aside they're basically horror short stories and he compiled a whole bunch of them. I also gave this three stars because because half of the short stories I really didn't like. No, I, I take that back. About like a third of them I really hated. About like a third of them I was like okay with. And then a third I really thought were great. So, due to the random diversity of that going on, I ended up having to just decide to go in the middle with it and give me a three stars. Some stories are really creepy. They've, there's one story about a couple who goes to stay at a hotel and then the guest next door starts screaming. There's one about this creepy ritual that this town has about giving a sacrifice to, I don't know what, some demon archangel abomination thing situation going on in town and then there's ones that were not so good such as one that was like all about this man who was like suffering from um, the fear of walking outside and he like couldn't leave his house and then he was convinced aliens I don't really know what happened honestly I had to skim that one so there's a, a wide variety of books but if you're into a wide variety of stories but if you're into creepypastas at all I would recommend checking it out if you're interested and I think it might be worth a peruse because I think there are some gems in this book for sure so with that I think this is going to be a long video I'm so sorry everyone but that is my December wrap up I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will be coming back at with you guys with what I plan to read in January with my January TBR. I am currently about ha like a third to halfway between five books and I didn't bother to show them because I already have enough books on this list. So with that being said, I will see you guys all in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below some of your thoughts on what I said to here. Do you guys disagree with me about my opinions? Did you guys think I was right on some things? Have you guys not picked up a, one of these books yet and you want to pick it up because of this? Let me know what you guys have thoughts, okay? I, I love y'all. Comment down below. Let's have a conversation. Okay, with that, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.